What's up guys, Kevin here again, and I'm breaking down today's two-game NFL Saturday slate. It's the first Saturday of the season, and a lot of you guys in the DFS Army chat group, the DFS Army VIPs, have been asking me about tutorials, how to use the DOM station. I do them all the time, but you know, it's always boring to look back at the one from three weeks ago, because I try what I try to do is I try to mix in a breakdown of the slate with these little tutorials so you both learn about the slate and the tutorial to kill two birds with one stone. Unfortunately, no one wants to go back and look at the Rams Chiefs breakdown, although that was pretty awesome. Because, hey, that was a couple weeks ago. So I figured since I wanted to talk a little bit about this two-game slate today, I've already broken down individually these slates, <clears throat> which are available for DFS Army VIPs, both on DFSArmy.com uh, under the NFL tab, as well as in our team chat forums in the news and notes channel as everything always is so i want to point out a couple things as we get started we've got the jets home taking on the texans we've got the broncos home taking on the browns now one of the first things i do whenever i'm researching a slate or getting prepped for a slate is i get the DFS Army NFL Research Station rolling. Get a look at what is happening here, what we can tell, what we can learn, what we can find out. So, we'll open up that page. The other thing I like to open up is the correlation matrix where we can get a look at the correlations, player correlations and all of that. But of course, the most important thing is understanding these different games and what the uh, various uh, defense versus position things are and matchups and who's going to play and where are our punts so we'll just break it down top to bottom let's roll all right so we're going to start with the quarterback position we've got two games going and again both fairly low totals although denver cleveland a little bit higher uh, houston jets is more of a jets uh, houston going to slaughter the jets likelihood although not a lock because again with a two-game slate we have to account for as many possible eventualities as possible again I'm, I'm going to try to build 150 lineups right now i might just do for the purpose of these examples of showing you guys i'll keep it to 30 and then i'll expand it out later just so that we don't have to wait too long for these optimizations optimizations to happen as i teach you my process of setting up the domination station optimizer to create 150 lineups for in this case a two game slate i always hear what am i supposed to do with the exposure i'm going to show you to the best of my ability remember this is a two game slate so your exposures on a player by player basis will be much lower on a larger slate of games all right looking at the domination station optimizer i've got it pushed over to the quarterback tab and we've got watson showing the best overall projection out of any player with Mayfield second overall, and then you've got Keenum and Sam Darnold hanging out here as the turds. And when you look at DVPs for all of these teams, they're all middling um, defenses against the quarterback position. So we should expect a neutral kind of game flow from the quarterbacks, which would favor better quarterbacks over worse ones and home quarterbacks over way, except the two home quarterbacks are terrible. So we don't want too much exposure to these guys. Um, the first thing I do when I'm setting up the domination station for a two-game slate is this is a very important column right here. This is players here, number of players allowed facing the defense in the lineup. Now, normally I leave this at zero or one, but when it's a two-game slate, you really have to raise this number up because you can allow players versus the defense that you're choosing. Simple as that. Two games. Shit happens. Not something we need to do on a big slate, but something we can do in a small slate like this. Okay. So the top of overall quarterback on the slate is gonna be Deshaun Watson, probably. You know, in terms of a raw projection standpoint, sure, Deshaun Watson is the man. And compared to these other guys, of course, um, the Jets defense, not good, not good against quarterbacks, not just good in general, just a bad team. Um, Mayfield is number two on the list. He's been hot lately. Let's take a look. I like to check the game logs for every player just to get a sense of where they've been at. 
Watson fairly consistent, except when he plays really tough defenses uh, earlier this season. Mayfield's been doing well recently, although had a little setback last week, home versus Carolina. You know, he's still a rookie quarterback, so we're going to keep that in mind as we're setting up our defenses. Keenum, mostly terrible, but sometimes serviceable, but mostly terrible. And Darnold is an interception machine. Important to note. Important. Young quarterbacks throw a lot of interceptions. I always like targeting young quarterbacks with a defense against. All right, let's take a look at the correlation matrix, see what we can find. All right, this is Houston Jets. So one of the things I like to look at is I look to look at the quarterback position so I can start to get a sense of player stacks. And we're going to go player by player, so bear with me here. Deshaun Watson. Hmm, interesting. Positive correlation with his kicker. Alfred Blue. Lamar Miller, positive correlation, not negative. Sometimes we see negative correlation between a quarterback and his wide receiver, but interesting that this is positive. So Lamar Miller, a little bit positive. Uh, here's the here's the tight end, Ryan Griffin, positive correlation. And as expected, the correlations increase when you start to get with the top player here, DeAndre Hopkins and Demarius Thomas. There's a slot wide receiver starting for Houston that we're going to take a look at as well, but we'll get into that. All right, negative with Jets defense. This is where we don't want to play Watson versus Jets defense. So I'm going to start with my first stack on the domination station here, and that is going to be because we've allowed players versus defense. I'm going to say stack QB Watson with exactly... Zero of Jets. Okay, I don't want him with the Jets defense. Okay, that was the first thing I discovered on the correlation station. Shocker! Okay. Herndon, positive. So if you start to look at this tool... Herndon positive. The Jets offensive players, Robbie Anderson, slight positive. So um, it's not a bad idea to pair up a Deshaun Watson. Now, this isn't a huge number, but it's enough to be significant. It's not a bad idea to pair up a Deshaun Watson with an opposing Jets offensive player, although it looks like not necessarily the running back position. But none of that is enough of a correlation to make much of a difference to me. Um, let's see here. Obviously, the quarterback assumption here when this was run was not right, but it doesn't affect anything. So we look at Jets quarterback um, correlations, and you'll see that Robbie Anderson is the biggest and best. And then the tight end, so Herndon would be the next biggest one. Jermaine Curse has a positive correlation, but they don't throw to him. Part of part of the deal with this chart, people ask how you look at it. Part of the deal with the correlations chart is if a player is correlated, but their projection still is shit, that doesn't mean they're a good play. So, all right, let's go back to Deshaun Watson and our Deshaun Watson stacks. We're gonna we're gonna set up QB Deshaun Watson with Hopkins, Thomas. We're going to go at least, no less than, one of Hopkins or Thomas. And let me just go over to the wide receiver position. Let's see who else we might like on this team. Here we go. Maybe DeAndre Carter. Let me take a look at DeAndre Carter. DeAndre Carter, in line for an increase in snaps as Keithy Kuki missed. So this is a guy we're going to put into our pool. He plays the slot. Correlation, short slate debate. He plays the slot for 
Houston and my man, DFS up north. Josh mentioned that in the wide receiver chart, you'll note that the Jets are the worst against slot wide receivers in the league. So if you're going to attack them, that's a really good way to. Now, this is a super low owned play that I really, really like. Let's just double check it with our wide receiver cornerback chart. And I'm showing you the tools here because this is really important to learn how you check things and how you come up with this stuff. My goal is to teach you how to be a better player, not to hand you a lineup. So let's take a look at Texans. So we've got DeAndre Carter and look at his opponent. So you see for the Jets corners, Tremaine Johnson, very good. Morris Claiborne, very good. As a matter of fact, these are two of the highest ranked um, corners in our system. And look at the QBR allowed to passes going to players in the outside against the Jets. They're actually very good corners on this team, and they have a pretty good safety. The weak link, Buster Scrying, and he will be facing DeAndre Carter. Now, we don't know anything about DeAndre Carter. He's a new player. It would have been nice if Kiki Kuti was in there. I don't think Carter's in line for some big game or anything because he's a crap player that doesn't get... Um, used in the passing game very often but it's an interesting addition that no one will be on and he's actually in a great matchup if the problem here isn't the matchup it's the player being a turd but we're going to overlook that okay because i'd rather use someone like that in a spectacular matchup than similar price on someone like this who sucks now so let's let's just jack up that a little bit we're gonna Raise him up so I can use him, and I'm going to include him in my stacks. You know what? Yeah, I don't like to do two of stacks because, oh boy, who is the second one? I mean, I guess you can add in Miller, and I guess you could add in Griffin, the tight end, and do a two of stack, but that's pretty restrictive. I'm going to do one of, and I'm going to leave these other guys out. So... Yeah, I'm going to roll with that for this for the purpose of this. Force a player in the last game in the flex. Disallow more than one pass game. We're not going to use these two. The uh, Force a player in flex is always fine to use. No reason not to, really. I'm just not going to be adjusting lineups today. I'll be busy, so I don't care. But actually, you can use that. As far as the two players from the same team, we don't want to use that this time. Okay, so I've set up my Deshaun Watson stack. That's one. All right? Oh, my gosh. This goes and goes, right? So let's go to the next quarterback position. We've got, since we'll stick with the same game, we're going to go with Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold, pretty easy, in my opinion. There are two basic players that I'm interested in for the Jets, but let's take a look at the Jets wide receiver chart to verify it. Um, not that this matters that much, but look, as you see, Jonathan Joseph on the outside, um, Sharice Wright on the outside, you've got Kareem Jackson on the inside, and not a whole lot of telling. Sharice Wright, not as good as Jonathan Joseph, who's their, quote, best guy. Robbie Anderson will move around. He'll play out of the slot a little bit. So I, I don't think it's too big of a deal. And basically, the Jets have no one else. Um, and Nunez is not even playing. They they just don't have a whole lot going on at the wide receiver position. They don't throw to anybody. Herndon, let's, let's confirm it with the... Recent game logs, you see Sharon Peak, nothing. Richard Matthews, he's on the Jets. What? Nothing. I mean, I guess you could take. Yeah, these are your these are your crazy flyers if you want to take them. But Jermaine Curse will be out there. Doesn't do anything, even when he's thrown to, but he'll be out there, so he's in the mix. Inunua out. Andre Roberts had a target once. Not a whole lot going on here, so. I think you've got to go one of Anderson, Curse, or the tight end, Herndon. Okay, so let's do that. One of. My favorite play is Anderson. Like, if 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 Darnold's having a good game, it's probably on the back of an Anderson. And we won't use much Darnold anyway, but nonetheless. All right, going through. There's only four quarterbacks, so we can. I'm trying to do it uh, as quickly as I can. Next up, 
Baker Mayfield, right? Now, Mayfield throws to a lot of people, so this one's tricky. Quick look at the correlation matrix. Wait, it's the wide receiver chart. Actually, let's look there. So we've got Chicago. Not Chicago. Cleveland. Your three primary wide receivers. Higgins, Landry, Callaway. And, ooh, terrible corners across the board. Bradley Roby, the name outside corner for the Broncos, not good. And these two guys are replacements for injured players. They're terrible, so bad they don't even have rankings yet. So everybody's in good shape as far as the matchup. And I would say Landry in the best, taking on whoever replaced Chris Harris in the slot. This whole Denver defense is a mess right now in the secondary because they lost their top player um, for the season. Now, let me just, while I'm here, Cleveland, Denver, let's look at the Denver side and the Cleveland matchups um, just real quick. Best guy, I guess, would be Terrence Mitchell, who might see Deshaun Hamilton. The slot guy looks like one of the worst I've ever seen in terms of the rankings, so that would favor Tim Patrick. And uh, Cortland Sutton going to take on a decent, so far this season, TJ Carey. So the best matchup goes to Tim Patrick. Interesting. Tim Patrick doesn't um, project that well because he doesn't get deep passes, but we'll see how it goes today. So Patrick, Sutton, Hamilton. Let's get that going. Baker Mayfield. So we already talked about him. We've got Landry, Callaway, Higgins, and Njoku. Now, what? who are these guys? These are his primary pass catchers. That's why I'm using them. You can do two. Also, instead, but you can only have one positive rule with each player and one negative rule. Or you can have as many negative rules as you want, but one positive. Like, we'll do with exactly zero of Broncos. Okay, sorry, I, I know this is taking a while, but this is how you have to learn how to do this. All right, so we got Baker Mayfield done. Let's talk. Case Keenum, we already looked him up. We're going to do exactly zero of Browns. We don't want to pair a quarterback with his defense, with his opposing defense. Now, Keenum has Patrick. He's got Hamilton. He's got Cortland Sutton. Let's see if there's a tight end that is relevant for Denver. Matt Lacoste. There we go. Okay. Matt Lacoste, just FYI, nothing special, but, you know, has gotten a target or two in his career. So we're going to add him into the mix. Don't love Lacoste, though. He's just a super cheap punt. Okay, and did I already do with exactly zero Browns? Boom. Uh, one last one I didn't do exactly zero of. It's going to be Sam Darnold with exactly zero of Texans defense. Okay. Now we've got our rule set up. All right. Now we're actually going to start to set up our player pool. Oh boy, it keeps going. So here we go. Rules are good. We've got our four quarterbacks. First thing I'm going to do is set my exposures, my quarterback exposures, how much I want of each guy. And this is a weird slate. I'm going to do 150 lineups, so I'm probably going to go even across these two guys, and we'll go 10% on these two. Now, you're asking me where I came up with the numbers. Look at the projections, the projected values, and I just come up with it. Sometimes, you know, if I want to be a little more spread out, I can go 35, 35, 15, 15. Sometimes you want to take a big stand on a player. So 
I don't know if I want to do that with the quarterback position this week, but you can. I might not want that much Sam Darnold. He sucks. But he's cheap, and maybe he's the winning lineup. Like I said, you don't want to mess around too much. You want to get exposure to everybody if you're going to make that many lineups. If I was doing 20 lineups, for example, I would might maybe choose two quarterbacks and just roll with it and hope I'm right. Or one. The fewer lineups you're making, the more extreme you have to take your chances. All right, we're going to set up our running back player pool. we got Chubb, Lindsey, two primary guys. Love them both. Going to try to get as much of them as I can. Lamar Miller, great. Elijah McGuire starting for the Jets. Not much competition for touches. Here are some turds. You've got a chance of getting a miracle touchdown with any of these three. Not likely. We're going to control those exposures as we get to the next level. Wide receivers, let's go through the list. Hopkins, Jar Landry, sure. Sutton, of course. Here we go. Wow, Sutton's way too expensive. Sean Hamilton, Anderson, Tim Patrick, Callaway, Higgins, Curse. Even Perriman is usable. That's for me as far as I'm going to go. Um, tight end position, not a whole lot going on here. We've got Njoku. Has Jordan Thomas done anything in recent weeks? Hang on. Jordan Thomas, like, does he even get a look at all? Yes, look at that. That's interesting. Thomas getting work. So we're going to include him in the mix. Jordan Thomas, Herndon, Griffin, who knew? Actually, he could attack the Jets via the tight end position, so it's very interesting. Um, let's see if any of these other turds are viable. Wow, Jordan Thomas, four targets. That's good. Not a lot of people going to be on Jordan Thomas, guys. Um, Herndon, Lacoste. What about Fells? No, don't be afraid to use Fells. I'm afraid to use Fells. Seth DeValve, he's a no. This guy, these turds, this guy. Damn, these Texans throw to all their freaking tight ends. This is like... Is that recent? Oh, man. Yeah, they throw to all their tight ends, so be aware. Jets? Also throw to all the tight ends, but... I don't know. This is going a little too deep for my uh, for my taste. But just be aware that the Texans do throw to all of their tight ends. We don't want too much of any of those turds. Um, not using them. Okay? There it is. There it is. Defense. Okay. All the defenses are in play every single week, always. Uh, my favorite are the Texans by far this week. Then I'm going to go Browns, Broncos, Jets in that order. All right? So let's give it a 30 lineup run and see what happens. Now... I'm trying to watch my exposures, right? I set up my quarterback exposures. Here's my running back exposures, and we love these guys. Oh, real quick on the running back position. Let's get a reload of this page, but real quick on the running back position. Let's see. Yeah, there you go. So here is Josh's breakdown today, and he really lays it out really nicely. But there's the research station numbers. And as you can see, you've got your lines, your spreads, your value. He's got it very similar to me. Running back position. Here, here's your defense against. So Cleveland is 27th, giving up 29 points per game. Denver 14th, giving up 24. Jets 12th, giving up 24.3. Houston 9th overall, giving 21.8. So you could see your defense against the weakest run, running back defense is Cleveland on the slate, which puts Philip Lindsay squarely in play as a top play. Chubb is a great spot. McGuire a starter. I'm, I'm going to control these exposures, so I think that's too much of every one of these players for the amount of lineups we're going to try to build here. I'm actually going to raise this number up so that we can see a more realistic number. But, you know, I usually, in a short slate like this, you can have very heavy exposures, but I'm going to want to mix that up. Like McGuire going up against that top-ranked Houston run defense, 70%. I don't really foresee a massive game from him. Let me see if his price is so cheap 
that I'm forced to use him. Um, Maguire, 4K, yeah, so he is cheap, and we do like him there just because of the cheapness, not because he should have a big game, but, you know, I'll lock him into, let's say, 55% of lineups, not uh, not uh, that much, or, or yeah, so 50 or 50%, because I don't need, or 45%, you know, some some lower number, right? We'll, we'll, we'll lower that down a little bit, see what happens here. Should get a little more Lamar Miller in our lives. I want to mix in some Alfred Blue, so just to have a couple shares. Hopkins, I don't want 100% of a wide receiver. Deshaun Hamilton, these numbers are crazy. So here's what we're going to start to do, right? I want more Landry, so let's raise that up, okay? I want less Hopkins, so we're going to bring this down. I like Anderson, but not that much. I don't want 68%. We're going to control our exposures. Okay, Anderson, what do I want? It's 4200 It's a great price. This is why these guys are popping. I get it. But if he if he turns out, we're going to have a disaster. So I'm going to lock him down at 40%. I want to make sure I'm getting some of this Carter guy too. Is he showing up? Carter, Carter, no. So we're going to raise him up a little bit. Seven. We're going to actually increase our uniques from one to two. Let's go to 100 because I really want to get a better sense here. As you're making more lineups, it will start to mix in more players. The fewer lineups you make, the tighter your exposures are going to be, as you can see. So Deshaun Hamilton still popping too much for my taste. Not enough Landry. Here's Carter. Okay, Curse. Patrick, we want a little more of these guys. So uh, Njoku, the top tight end showing. I want to get that Jordan Aikens guy in here. Um, Texans, 88%. That's too much, although I love them. I'm going to set them at 60%. The most likely scenario is that the Texans are the best defense, but it's not the only scenario. They are on the road. The Jets are terrible, and we know this. We know this. But the Browns can make mistakes too. So I might go, you know what, I'm going to go 60% because I do think they're very, very good. And then we're going to say Broncos, not, I don't want too much Broncos either. So, because I like the Browns in this game. So I'm going to go, I don't know, 20%. Get some Browns going. Well, Browns defense, because that Broncos offense is so bad. And now you got a better mix. Okay. That's a mix I like. All right, let's look over here. A little more Herndon, Herndon than I like, right? A little more Njoku. I like Njoku. Um, as Josh points out in his breakdown, Njoku is definitely a positive matchup situation. We just saw Greg Kittle go bananas against this Broncos defense. So we see that the Broncos are very exploitable. We've seen Jer um, Cook uh, go crazy against them. Very exploitable. But uh, Njoku is not a 70% player. I like that he's cheap. So he's going to get heavy exposure for me on this slate. I like it. I like the spot, but not, not 70 percenter. Okay, and Herndon, anybody on the Jets should never be super high owned. So let's go 25 percent for him, and let's see what else starts to pop. Okay, what's crack a lacking? Now you're starting to get a little Lacoste, a little Ryan Griffin. Where's my boy Jordan Aikens, my, my, my slate winner extraordinaire? One thing I'm noting with these crappy choices at tight end is I don't want too much tight end exposure in my flex, so I'm going to set this at about... 15%. Again, we're going to look for our guy. Um, Aikens raise up a projection a little bit here. Just make sure he's popping up in a couple of lineups. Jordan Thomas, that was the guy, yeah. So let's let's put him in there, 0.7, okay? Just so he shows up a little bit. Let's run this again. Okay, Jordan Thomas now. No, that's way too much. Jordan Thomas. Let's give him 10% max exposure. Okay, let's not go crazy, Jordan Thomas. You ain't exactly um, uh, crushing slates here. All right, so now we've got a couple of these two um, Houston turds, a little Njoku, a little Herndon, not too much going on with tight ends in the flex. All right, Deshaun Hamill. Now, now checking out the wide receiver position. We're almost through. We're getting there. Wide receiver position. We've got Hopkins a little too high still. Um, he's obviously the best play on the slate, but I don't care. I don't want 90% of one guy, especially the most expensive wide receiver, going up against 
I, I mean, I do like him, but maybe like a 70%er on this kind of slate. On a main slate, um, a stud wide receiver would be like a 30%er for me. No matter how much I lower him, he keeps popping up. That's because Demarius Thomas... DeAndre Carter, again, Deshaun Hamilton, I got to deal with that. So let's let's take Hamilton down a notch here. We'll go 10.5, see what happens. Again, this is a process of trial and error. You got to run it, change a projection, run it, change a projection. Just, uh, I'm trying to run through this quickly, uh, as quickly as I can, but that is how you work the optimizer tool. You run it, you see what it's doing, you modify to adjust to what you want to see. If that makes any sense, I hope it does. If I'm getting too much of a player, I modify it. Here, Deshaun Hamilton now down to 46%. Is this a 46% guy? No. I don't want 46% of some guy who's never done anything ever. And where's Tim Patrick? He, he's, he was the guy that we thought was in the, the best matchup. So let's get a little more Tim Patrick. This is DraftKings, so we can just deal with these PPR guys. Right? It's fine. Tim Patrick. See, now we're getting 20%. I want to raise up guys like Jarvis Landry. Why is he not popping? Well, it's because DeAndre Hopkins is eating up all of the wide receiver cash. So let's go 17.5.8 and see what happens there. I need to mix up my players. I'm going to make a lot of lineups. Okay, DeAndre Hopkins. There we go. Now he's down to 60. Oh, now you're getting down. There we go. Now Robbie Anderson in here. Now we got a little more of all of these kind of guys. So this is starting to look a lot better to my eye. Okay, we're going to raise up some of these other turds a little bit still. I want a little more Tim Patrick than that. So let's go 8.5. Um, curse, fine. But Callaway will get a little bit more of. Where's Rashad Higgins? He's not showing up. Let's get him showing up. Got to make sure all of your guys start to show up. So if they're not, you raise up the projection. Who else do we have that at wide receiver that isn't showing up? Let's take a look. And if they're not showing up, um, I guess Bashard Perriman, you can jack up his to six. I don't want more than very low exposure to him. Um, Patrick, Anderson, Hamilton. What a shitty fucking slate, guys. <laughs> this, is, this is terrible. Terrible. But nonetheless, we got to play it. We don't have to play it, but we're going to play it because we're degenerates. We play every fucking slate. Now, looking at the running back position, I'm going to pretty much like suck it up and go all in on, on these two studs or, or very heavily in on them. Let's say I want to set a little limitation on Lindsay just not to have him in every lineup. I can have him in every lineup. That's how much I like that matchup for Philip Lindsay at home. It's tough to not use him. He's a very exciting player. And he's at home and he's taking on a very bad defense. But, and he's not overly priced considering. But I'm going to go 85% just for shits and gigs. Okay, let's run this thing. As we start to get closer, I'm actually going to put these lineups in. I'm going to show you the full process. So, Lindsay, Chubb. I'm going to limit Chubb. Chubb I like less than Lindsay. So, and the reason I like Chubb less than Lindsay, I like Chubb very much. Um, uh, I got a Chubb for Chubb every single week. But he's on the road at Broncos. The Broncos' defense is not shit. Okay, now I love the volume he gets, but for him to be the most expensive, I'm gonna I'm gonna limit him and see what happens to 60%. I think what might happen is it's just gonna pop Lamar Miller more than I want, which isn't isn't the ideal situation for me either. All right, that reminds me, since I don't want 100% running backs in my flex either. I'm going to go 70%, even 65 and this will also help limit how many running backs we're using. Yeah, now I'm getting too much Lamar Miller. Miller I like less than Chubb, although I do like the idea of pairing up the running backs with their defense. So actually, let's go, let's stack DST Texans with exactly one player, uh, uh, at least one of... Ready? Miller. Blue. Okay, we're going to stack Browns with no less than one of Chubb. So if we're using Browns defense, defense and running backs are correlated. Let's go to correlation chart to show this. All right, real quick. 
I, I happen to know it, but we can show it. Jets, let's see. Elijah Maguire, very positive. See that? Jets, Elijah Maguire, very positive, right? Let's see. Texans. Here we go. Lamar Miller, not as positive. Okay. Interesting. But the Jets are very positively correlated, but not Houston. Interesting. So I'm not going to do that for Houston. I'm going to follow the, the correlation chart. Let's check the other one. Browns. Cleveland, Denver. Here we go. Cleveland defense. Nick Chubb, positive. Case Keenum, negative. That's why we don't use them with the opposing quarterback. Negative with Philip Lindsay. Did I, did I set that? Oh, let's do that too. See? Good stuff. Okay. Defense time with exactly zero players of Lindsay. Okay, let's go Jets. Zero players of Miller. Normally we don't have to do this because we disallow um, defense versus opposing players. But in this case, we're allowing it, so uh, we're just going to manually we're gonna Broncos with zero of Chubb. Texans with zero of. Actually, I'm not going to do the Texans one again because I also think that Eli McGuire is such a is such a um, value play that I can actually play him even if the Texans defense is kicking ass. So I'm not going to use that rule, right? Sometimes you have to make a judgment, and that's the judgment I'm making. He's such a value. Miller, way too much. I don't want 94% Miller. So I like Miller, but I'm going to reduce his projection and set a max limit. I'm going to call it 50 55 what is his price yeah i'm going to call him 45 percent it's too much he's too expensive okay let's see what happens now lindsey chubb i'm going to actually increase chubb just a bit from there let's go to 65 percent because i want a lot of chubb i need some chubb in my life lindsey mcguire there we go 43 percent now again i don't like mcguire in this matchup so it is scary to play him the only thing is and blue is more of a 10 percenter for me. Let's do that. I'm going to remove the rule of stacking Miller with Texans defense and blue because it's going to, it loves Texan defense and I don't want that much Miller. So I like Miller, but I don't want that much. And I definitely didn't want that much Alfred Blue. So let's now just raise up Duke Johnson a little bit. He's a Justin Caser. We're going to give him 10%. Alfred Blue is a 10% or two. We're going to go, I just raise up the projection and set him for 10% max. Same for um, Duke. We're going to raise up his projection with a love, but set him for 10% max. too many restrictions if you put too many restrictions and you run the tool in tournament mode it's not going to work so we change it to optimal mode okay start looking at my exposures and i want to keep modifying them until i get them more like i want them i want a little more even distribution of these turd wide receivers the higgins of the world these guys so i'm going to start raising them up a little bit as i continue to mess with this hamilton a little too much landry now is coming out where i want him a little bit more robbie anderson than i'd want here anderson so we just keep running it and modifying it
and I wait until I get the numbers I want to see. I keep modifying these by just slightly changing the projections around or just by changing our max exposure limitations. Now again, these numbers that you're seeing here, this is more exposure generally than I'm going to want to these particular um, positions. Like I normally would never take a 70% wide receiver. But on this slate, on this slate, there's only two stud wide receivers between the two games. So, you know, same thing with running backs. I mean, do I normally take 60, 70% exposure, 90% exposure to running backs? No, but this is a two game slate. So this is kind of what you have to do. And, you know, you don't take 100% so you can have that differentiation between yourself and other people. I'm going to leave this at 100. Go back to tournament mode and see if that works. Some tournament mode requires that you have one or two players per position group at 100%. Yeah, so you can't have them all below 100, which is why that stopped before. I, I want to see it a little more balanced as, as this comes through. There you go. Chubb, 60. Maguire, 40. You know, I'm liking this distribution quite a bit. Liking that. A little too much Cortland Sutton. You know, you got to watch them. And when somebody pops too much, we reduce. I don't want that much Cortland Sutton. I want a little more of these guys, right? A little more of our sneaky DFS Army, um, Josh DFS up north call, right? A little bit more Jermaine Curse. Why not? Why not? Possession receiver, super cheap. Going to allow us to afford some of these stud running backs. So this is how we run it. This is how we do it. Look at the numbers change as you make adjustments. Keep adjusting this until we get it just where we want it. Am I getting my man Jordan Griffin? Yes. I like that mix. How's the defenses looking? Okay. Get, get me some Browns in there hopefully at some point. And this is getting there. So we're almost ready. We're almost ready to upload our lineups. Let's take a quick little over to DraftKings and see if there's any fucking contest worth entering. Or did I just waste my time? I always look for the biggest contests. So you've got this first down. I think this is a 20 entry max. Play action, 20 entry max. One of the things I do sometimes, if there's no... Oh, here's your mini max championship. What? What? That's the one we're doing. Wait, that's for tomorrow. Hold on. Let's see what we got for today. Okay. So 20 entry max, 20 entry max, $8. We can, we can load up 150 lineups here. How much to first? 150k not bad i like that payout 15 percent to first right let's take a look at some of these other ones but another easy way to do it cheap you're like oh, i don't go to the fucking kind of money well now i'm seeing um the following right you got a dollar a three dollar and a two dollar 20 entry so you could there's also two quarter games that have 20 entry quarter jukeboxes right so maybe the move here is going to be to make 60 lineups. What am I been at? 100? We're going to go to 60. Max out those three contests. I'm just going to spread them around. So we're going to put the lineups in. We're going to spread them around to those three contests. No big deal. Each one unique. Not making one set of 20 and putting them in all three, but rather making three Three sets. So Higgins, Demarius Thomas. Did I get my my guys that I want? Deshaun Hamilton. I'm going to raise him 0.1 a little bit. I'm going to raise him to 9 because we like his matchup. I'm pretty close to done here, guys. I like these exposures. Garbage players. All of them. Fucking garbage. Broncos. Any little Browns in my life. So let's just, let's just make sure we get that exposure going on our defense. One more run and we're ready to put our lineups in. Why is Browns not showing up? Slap a like on those guys. Oh no, it's Broncos, that's why. Okay. Slap a love on those guys. I don't want too much jet, so I'm going to set them for 10%. Let's see if this works. Of course not. Alright, let me try raising this up a little bit. 
I'm going to lower this a little bit, 6.2. I'm going to set these at 100% because we can't leave too many restrictions. And we're going to raise this up to 7.8. Now I'm just looking at the, the closest one, so like 8.2. Yeah. You want to show up so that it might try to use them. There we go. Okay, defense. Now we're getting a little bit of browns. Here's what I'm going to do, though. Still too much jets. 5.9. Let's see what happens. Still way too much for my taste. I'm going to go to five. All right. Don't like that. And here's the issue. We can't have this restriction here, or it's never going to use them. So we're going to lower that Broncos. Broncos I like anyway. I don't, this shouldn't be that. Okay. What am I doing? Defense. Broncos. There we go. Getting better. This must have a lot to do with the um, the pairing I did of the defense. There we go. Now we're seeing the numbers I want to see. To jack that up quite a bit, but that's what you got to do. Work the projection to make it give you the output you want. I'm still moving it up because I want more Browns than Broncos here. Not by a lot. I like them both. The Browns is really just, I, I like home defenses. So let's keep that in mind. But Browns defense, just because Case Keenum is sucks. That's really what that's about. But I like home defenses, which is why I'm using even just a little bit of the Jets. And part of this is it's going to force some of these guys in. The Texans are far and away the best play on the slate, but... In a single game tournament, there's a lot of variance. You never know what can happen. Browns are bringing a rookie quarterback in. All right, so there we go. Sorry, guys, this was really long. I hope it's enough time for you guys to make some lineups. Check this out. Make lineups as you're watching this so you learn how to use the Domination Station and get ready for tomorrow's 11-game slate. I'm going to put these lineups in and roll with it. Had enough. Let's do this. Boom. All right, how do we put the lineups in? No, good question. Let's go for it. Luckily, I'm going to just going to do the cheap ones so that we can... Do this as an example. Lineups are in. How do we put them in our contests? Again, we're going to go. We're going to find those contests we were just looking at. The little ones. I always sort by entries. Okay, I don't want to do the $8 one with this mix. I didn't put quite as much time into it as I'm ready to do for an $8 max, but I want to max out these little contests. There's a $2 one, I believe. Here we go. This one's the worst of them because it's the smallest. Like, if I'm going to do this, I like to go in the big ones, but let's hope that the best one is in the right contest. Can't be sure. And that's it. Boom. We're done.
entered contest, use the DOM. That's basically a rundown of the DFSArmy.com Domination Station Optimizer and how to use it. This is specific for today's slate. DFS Army VIPs get access to it. You go to DFSArmy.com and you can sign up. You can get my advice. You can check out our tools. You can ask me questions. It's fucking awesome. Crushing all sports. You want MMA? We're doing it. Check out the MMA channel. You want some other sport that's DFS related? Soccer? Tennis? Some shit you never heard of? We cover it. College basketball? High lie? We got high lie people. We are curling specialists. We got it all. Come on in. Check it out.